before he started his ministry at 30 years old, which is the year of ministry. If you want to be in the ministry, it starts from 30 to 50. And 51, from 51 on, then you become an elder. So some of you out there calling yourself an elder, you, you are, you, you're contrary to the law. You ain't no elder. And people that's older don't look at you as no elder. You know, you ain't lived but 30-something years, now you're an elder. <laughs> that's a joke. But uh, Luke, the fourth chapter, and let's look at verse 5. It says, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. So he took him out of the side, you know, and a vision showed him all the kingdoms, of the, including the kingdoms that we're in now. In a moment of time. Listen to what he said. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me. Remember the Most High said he give it to he rules in the kingdom of men. And he give it unto, unto this world the basis of men, paraphrasing. That we just read in Daniel 4 and 17. Say, he said, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. So the Most High gave it to the basis of men, gave it to Satan. Right now, at this time, this is what he said. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. So you're looking at, no matter who it is, that's dealing in the position in this world, he said, if you worship him, all shall be thine. They worship in Satan. Care how you look at it. How you want to change it up in your own mind. He said, it's been given to him, and if you bow down and worship him, all shall be thine. All these kingdoms that's been on the world. And the master of Shah asked and said to him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the most side, thy power, and him only shall thou serve. See? But see, every time he came to you, I'm not going to go into that, but every time... He came and tempted him. You know what Amashiach Abishai dealt with? In rebuking Satan for all you that don't believe that you got to keep the Most High's laws. He went right to the law of the Most High. That's what he dealt with in rebuking Satan. So all y'all walking around here with Satan on your right sh shoulder, Satan on your left shoulder, Satan all up in your mind, and you think you're rolling with the Most High. And you ain't even trying to do what's right according to his law, such commandments. But you got your own power. Yeah, it's Satan. Mashiach Mashiach told him he got to bow down and worship the Most High. That's what he told him. He said it is written. That's what we got to do. That's what he got to do. That's why when you look at Job, he told the Most High, he asked for permission. Told the Most High put forth his hand, his left hand, and you have Job cursing to his face. But if you understand that spiritually, then you don't understand how this thing is operating. He said it's been given to him, and whosoever he'll give it to, if they bow down and worship him, how you think they got the kingdom? You might as well close the Bible up and go out there and do whatever you're going to do and worship him if you don't believe what he just said. The Most High cut him. Told him, you know, you're only supposed to serve the most high. And him only shall you, you serve and bow down to. That's why we only we only serve the most high, as he said. He's our power. Your house is the power. The most high is the power. Look at Isaiah 55 and 8. Isaiah 55 and 8. Isaiah 55 and 8.
For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Most High. Hear that? So his thoughts are not our thoughts, and his ways are not our ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. But you know your power, right? You know the most high. <laughs> Whereas the rain cometh down in the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Meaning whatever he say is going to happen. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing wherein I send it. That's what he's saying. That's how it is. He's making it clear. So we got to be in, we got to be in the spirit to understand in these trying times what to do and how to make it out of this. You know, what it is that's getting ready to go down, you know, a lot of people, you got to prepare yourself. You got to be prepared. But it's, what good is it to have all the physical thing that you need and you're not ready spiritually? See, it's very important that we see this, people. Because everybody's looking at a carnal aspect of what it is that we're dealing with and don't really have a spiritual part. The Ephesians 6. And 10. Finally, my brethren, Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong by Hashem Mashiach Yahushua and in the power of his might. See? That spiritual power of his might. That's why he told us in 2 Timothy 1. And seven. Hold that. We're going back to Second Timothy one and seven. It says, "For the Most High have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. See, that spiritual power and of love. And the way you get your spiritual power is to keep His commandments, which is the love. And you read Second John six chapter." 2 John, verse 6. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. See? That's the love that it's talking about here. In 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For the most I have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, spiritual power, and of love, and of a sound mind. See? This is what he's given us. If you can receive it. Now going back to Ephesians 6 and, and 10. Finally, my brethren, these are the Israelites. Be strong by Hashem, Hashem, in the power of His might. You see? We got to be strong in the power of the mighty strength of the Most High. Put on the whole armor of the Most High. That's protection. You got to have faith to believe this. That's why I say put on the whole armor of the Most High that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Remember the devil say going to come down with much wrath. But he say put on the whole armor, the protection of the Most High that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not with flesh and blood. Talk about no people. And we ain't wrestling with no flesh and blood. You can get all the guns and all the things you think. So we ain't wrestling with no flesh and blood. But against principalities. That's what we fighting against. Principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Those are high level demonic 
demons. Hear that? Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Those are high level demons. On the left side. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor, the whole protection of the most high. That you may be able to withstand in the evil days. That's where we at y'all. So I could ask the most high to protect us. That we may be able to stand in this evil day. When we made the wicked for what? The day of evil. We in it. And having done all to stand. Not flatline but to stand. Don't be afraid. Stand therefore. He say sit down. He say stand therefore. That's why he say good up your lawns like a man. He say stand therefore. Having your loins girt about with truth. What's the truth? Psalms 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. Standing forth with the laws of the most high. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. The only way that you're going to be righteous is to keep his commandments. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. See? And above all, taking the shield of faith. The shield is protection of faith. Believing in the most high. And the Mashiach Yavashai going to Most High on our behalf with groanings that we can't even groan is so sad. Ain't no pride in that. The angels standing before him trembling. See, we got to reach our salvation with fear and trembling of the Most High. Not on a man. Listen, above all, taking the shield of faith, your belief in the Most High. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked. See? You may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Through the power of the Most High. So I said, and take the helmet of salvation. The helmet is in your mind. That's the helmet goes on your head. Let your mind think on the salvation. And doing the things that's going to take to reach the salvation. That our names can be written in the book of life. In the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the most high. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto. With all perseverance and supplication for all saints, for all our people. Very important people. Second Peter 1 and 5. So all you that's looking for this physical physical battle, you better get with the spiritual. So if you don't have a spiritual before you deal with the physical, then how you think the most high is gonna work with you with the physical? How you think gonna fulfill the things that we just read if you don't have the spirit of the most high? And the most high not rolling with you, it's not gonna happen. 2 Peter 1 and 5. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience righteousness, and to righteousness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity, which is love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our power of Mashiach Yahweh Shah. See? You gotta have these principles that was listed above. It says, but he that lacketh these things is blind. You lack these these position, these particular things that's written here, you're blind. I mean you can't see, you're in darkness. You're not in the light. And cannot see afar off. We got to see afar off because we got to see 
what these prophecies are in us as they come to be. That's why I say watch and pray. Watch. Well, what you watching for if you don't, what you looking for if you don't know what to watch for? That's why he said, but he that lack of these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Purge from your old sins, then you become a new. Look, bro. let me read it to you. You got to become new. You can't remain the same because the solutions are all here. It's just a matter of how do you go about doing the things that's necessary to follow what's necessary to become. What it says here in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in the name of the Lord and Savior, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. So you got to change. Well, I've been like this all my life. Well, if you've been like this all your life, then something's wrong with you. If you've been in the truth for some time, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Everything's got to change. You gotta change people. Okay, you cannot remain the same. Look at um, Joel two. Joel the second chapter. Joel 2. And we're going to look at um, verse 27. It says, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Most High your power, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. See, he said, we going to know that he's, a, he's in the midst of Israel and that he is the most high and of Mashiach, Yahushai, our power and none else. Nobody else is he saying. Then my people who are the 12 tribes of Israel shall never be ashamed. So how do we prove who's his people? Exodus 3 and 10. Exodus 3 and 10. This proves who my people are. One of the scriptures. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. See? That's his people, the children of Israel. So now when you go back to Joel 2 and 27, it says, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the most high your power, and none else, nobody else. And my people who are the twelve tribes of Israel shall never be ashamed. Now, when you go go to the next chapter, Amos 3 and 1. It's the very next chapter. When well, you say you're going to be in the midst of Israel, and we're going to know that he's our power and nobody else's. That's what it just said. Now, look at what Amos 3 and 1 says. Hear this word that the Most High has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family, which is the twelve tribes of Israel, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, this is what he said, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Read you again. This from the Most High. He said, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So going back to Joel 2 and 27, this is what it says. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the most high your power and none else. Why? Because he just told us, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. You only know Israel. Twelve tribes of Israel. 
and my people shall never be ashamed. So now when you go to Acts 2 and 20, and 21, I believe that's it, Acts 2 and 20, 21. Now let's go back to Joel 2 and 32 first. Because it goes right along with it. Because you know in 27 it says, You only have I known. Excuse me, it says, You know, I'm in the midst of Israel, and that I am the most high your power, none else. Now verse 32 says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of, of the Mashiach El Shai shall be delivered. This is what they got to John 3.16 for. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So this is where this comes from. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord or about so much that thou shalt shall be delivered. When the New Testament says saved, same thing, saved or delivered. When Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Most High have said, and in the remnant whom the Most High shall call. The remnant is that one third again. So now we go to Acts 2.21. It says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, as we just read in Joel 2.32, where it comes from, shall be saved, where it said delivered. Same thing. It's saved. Listen who it's talking to. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. See? Mashiach Yahushua of Nazareth, listen what it says. A man approved of the Mosai, where? Among you. Who? Verse 22. Ye men of Israel. It was a man approved among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which the Mosai did where? I mean, by him where? In the midst of you, just like we read in Joel 2:27. As you yourself also know, see. So he was just among the Israelites in the midst of Israel. He wasn't among everyone. But see, we want to try and bring everybody into this picture. Everybody's not going to come to this picture. Everybody's not, you know, warranted. As the most I said, he only know Israel. He only know us. You can't make him know everybody when he says he only know Israel. He only know us. Now the times that we see happening and the things that we have to be prepared for, as you see people marching in the street, and going off, doing the things that they do. Look at this. Go to uh, Second Ezra fifteen and fourteen. It says, woe me destruction to the world and them that dwell therein. And then when it says in Revelation 12 and 12, then we read that. Prophecy. For the sword and their destruction draw not, draw near. Sword and destruction of the sword, with the sword, is drawn near. And one people shall stand up to fight against another. And swords in their hands, see? So I'm telling you, in the spirit you can understand, spiritually you got to be ready for what it is that's going to happen in the carnal or the flesh. One people going to stand up to fight against another with swords in their hands. Mind their swords with guns. But there shall be sedition among men. Don't you see the sedition? The sedition happened the next day after the election. And invading one another. It's going to get deeper, y'all. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. They don't regard the kings, the president, or anyone underneath him. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Don't you see that in the streets? Of course, they're actually going to stand in whatever they want to do. A man shall desire to go into a city 
and shall not be able. That's martial law. Now, if they keep on riding and doing the things they're doing, start tearing up stuff, Obama declare martial law, he remains in office, y'all. He become this king we just read about right here. If he declare martial law, it's only, what, a couple of months? And you see what they're doing? So if he, he declared martial law, it's on. A man, verse 27 of us, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. You're not going to be able to go from city to city. Let's go down wherever you at. You're going to be there. You say, I want to get home, dog. No, you can't go. You're going to be there. That's why you better be, pre be prepared. Well, because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. And you know, it's a lot of pride in this world right now. You hear people say, you got to have pride. Your pride. Because of pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed. And men shall be afraid. Men ain't going to be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. They're going to have guns in their hands going from house to house. Trying to survive. Listen. And spoil their goods. That means rob you of what you have. Because of the lack of bread. Because of the lack of food. It only takes two hours to just to empty out no matter how big a grocery store is. They bum rush them grocery stores, it's done. Truck stop. I mean, excuse me, you remember your trucks can't go from city to city? Ain't nobody going from city to city. Train stop. Your vehicle stop. Computer stop. No gas. So now you try to know how to live off the land. You got something, they're going to be trying to come get it. That's what it's saying. That's why in the spirit, you notice how the spirit led us to say we got to put on the whole armor of the most high. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods, rob them. Because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation, you see. We're catching a lot of hell. Now, we don't want to be part of that. That's why I say you understand the formula. You understand the spirit of the Most High and what He's laid out for us to do and how to do it. Then you have to be concerned about this at this time. If you prepare spiritually first, that's most important, y'all. Listen. Behold, said the Most High, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the east, from the south, from the east, and, and Lebanon, the north, to turn themselves one against another. And we pay the things that they have done to them, to us. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen. You see? It's all because of how they treated the chosen people of the Most High. The twelve tribes of Israel. So will I do also. And recompense in their bosom. Thus said the Most High Power. My right hand, Masiach shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. You hear that? That's payback. So though we be shot down, and the verdict is not guilty, in this world, in this kingdom, in the realm that we are now, the Most High said, like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also, and recompense in their bosom. Thus said the Most High, my right hand shall not spare the sinners, 
and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. See? The fire has gone forth from his wrath and have consumed the foundation of the earth and the sinners like the straw that is kindled. You hear that? What will fire do to straw? That's how the most high looking at how insignificant you're going to be. And it's going to burn up. You're going to be just like straw. Most scriptures say you're going to be like stubble in the fire. Oh, yeah, it's on, y'all. Go back to Joel, the third chapter. In the second verse. See, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people, as he just said, and for my heritage, Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations in part of my land of Israel. Gotta be ready. Spiritually and mentally and physically. And those that can't, most are going to give you the power, spiritual power, to be able to maintain. Look at uh, Second Ezra, the second chapter. See, we did not. Uh, We didn't follow the Most High's commandments. And you have those that, like I say, still trying to get us not to do right, not to keep, you know, His commandments. And that's the reason why we're in the condition that we're in now. Second issue is the second chapter, and we're going to look at verse 10. Thus said the Most High unto Ezra, Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. Their glory also will I take unto me, and give these the everlasting tabernacle which I had prepared for them. See? They shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savor. They shall neither labor nor be weary. So we're not going to work anymore. We're not going to be sad anymore. Go and ye shall receive Pray for a few days unto you, that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. you. Hear this? The kingdom is already prepared for us. Watch, he said. But you got to know what to watch for. That's why I say nobody's concerned about 
what to watch for. You got to know the prophecies. You got to know the testimony of Amashik Abishai is prophecy. You got to know these things. That's why he's saying watch. He said, take heaven and earth to witness, for I have broken the evil in pieces and created the good. For I live, said the Most High. Remember what Mashiach Roshai said, only one good is the Most High. Remember what he said? He has broken the evil. So I say he's going to bring it upon there. Look, look. This is one of my favorites. Lamentation, hold that. Lamentation 4. 22. He's broken the evil. Lamentations 4 and 22. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. This is not talking about the time of Jeremiah. This is talking about our time. Because this, as it's written, this is our last captivity. Now, this is it. So I say he's gonna no more carry us away into captivity. But what is he gonna do? He will visit thine iniquity. He's gonna visit the sins or the wickedness, O daughter of Edom, of the Caucasian people. He will discover thy sins. He will discover their sins. You see what they have done in breaking the laws of the Most High. Mashiach is going to come back and out of his mouth will come the laws. He's going to say, Thou shalt not murder. <sighs> Destroy people. Thou shalt not steal. <sighs> Destruction. With the laws. As it is written. It happened to us. He said you're going to discover their sins. And 2 Corinthians 6 and 9 says, For Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So meaning that Esau would have to be ruling when? At the end of the world. And Jacob, who was the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel, we got next to rule forever and ever and ever. As it is written. A change of the guard. That's all. Now going back to 2 Ezra. The second chapter. Verse 14. Take heaven and earth to witness. For I have broken the evil in pieces. Here what he say? Broken the evil in pieces. And created the good. For I live, said the most high. The only way you're gonna create the good is we be following what is good. But what is good? We know the most high is good, right? My second shy wouldn't even allow the rich man to call him good. He said, Don't call me good. It's only one good, that's the most high. A lot of y'all say I'm good, but you ain't the most high. It's just, you know, in the spirit, you know, my second was shy with a lot of men to call him good, so something that I'm not going to do. But y'all do it however y'all want to do it. If you figure that you can do it and it's not going to offend the most high. But what's good? Romans 7 and 12. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. So, you're not going to be righteous. You're not going to be good unless you follow in the commandments of the Most High. Commandments are good. 2 Ezra is 2. And verse 20, verse 16. And thou that be dead will I rise, will I raise up again from their places and bring them out of the graves for I have known my name in Israel he say he's going to raise us up out of the graves those that be dead for 
physically and spiritually. Now, we look at 1 Thessalonians 4.16. First Thessalonians 4 and 16. And it says, For the Most High, while Mashiach Yavashai himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. He coming from the fourth dimension with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet. The trump of the Most High and the dead in Mashiach, those that are dead, Baha Shama Mashiach Kavashai, understanding Baha Shama Mashiach Kavashai, shall rise first. Like he just said, he's going to raise them up from the graves. Then we which are alive, those that are still alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, which are the vehicles or the chariots of the Most High, what they call flying saucers, what they call. UFOs, unidentified flying objects, we call them IFOs, identified flying objects, because we knew what they were, even in slavery, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for the carry me home, looked over Jordan, what did I see, a band of angels coming for me, this is what we read in here, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the most high while Mashiach of Ashai in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Most High while Mashiach the whole shot. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. See? So that's a good thing. Going back to 2nd Ezra, the 2nd chapter. And we're going to look at, uh, start at verse 24. It says, Abide still, O my people, and take thy rest, for thy quietness shall come. See? And we understand, it says, Take thy rest. Let me show you. Isaiah 14 and 1. It says, Take thy rest. So we're going to have rest, people. Now, before we... Let's see. Look at uh, Isaiah 14 and 1. And it reads, For the Most High will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. This after we go through the tribulation, all the things that we read about so far. There's more prophecies than that to happen, but at least it's this is what we know the future holds for us. He's going to set us in our own land. The Most High is going to do this. And the strangers shall be joined with them. These other nations are going to be joined with us. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. They'll be cleaving to us. It's the good news to know that this is what we're working for. So we hoping for. This is what our desire is. The strangers shall be joined with them and shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. We're looking for this rest that he just told us about. So we're going to take them and bring us to our place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Most High for servants and handmaids. They're going to be men, men servants and women servants. Men slaves and women slaves. Just like we are slaves now. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. We're going to be the new rulers of the world. You see? Ain't going to be no uh, nation that's going to ever be over us. It's the last captivity we ought to go through. 
That's why it's not hard. It seems like it would be easy for people to realize that this is your opportunity to be right here. You got no other chance. This is our last captivity. You understand this? You ain't coming back again and saying, oh, well, I got a chance to make it in another generation and so forth. You better understand this and overstand this point. You better get it together while you're in this fleshly body right now. When you come back, it could be the judgment. Well, your book will be written in the written in the book of life, or you're gonna be cast to the lake of fire. We just read it. Listen, but this is what's promised to the one third of the twelve tribes of Israel. Verse three, and we're looking for that rest. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Most High shall give thee rest from what? From thy sorrow. And from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. See? That's when we get that rest. In the kingdom. It's not our time to rest. This is not this is not this is not our time of relaxation and so forth. That's why so many people think that. Is just going to come without any work. So you got to work hard for this. This is not something that's just going to come easily. But like I said, it's, it's a remedy to it all when you understand how to operate in the spirit. Romans 13 and 11. And that knowing the time. So you gotta know the time. That's why he said, "Watch." That now is it is high time to awake out of sleep. You gotta wake out of sleep, y'all. When you sleep, you see what darkness. And darkness represent ignorance. So I say, wake out of sleep. So you want to know more. You have to know more because there come a time that you gonna just be thinking what you should know. Hopefully you know what to know because you didn't went through it to know the prophecies and you see them and you right there with the most high of Mashiach Yavashai and the angels as they operate and do the things they're going to do on this earth. That's as it is written. It's high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. You know? Now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. This is written for us. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, cast off the works of ignorance, not knowing what you should know. And let us put on the armor of light. See? We got to put on this armor of light. We know that light is keeping the commandments of the Most High. Having faith in the Mashiach Yahweh shot. Who's coming to judge and make war? Going back to Second Ezra, the second chapter. Love this. Verse twenty-four. Abide still, O my people. And take thy rest, for thy quietness shall come. See? Quietness is going to come. Nearest thy children, O thou good nurse, establish their feet. As for the servants whom I have given thee, them shall not one of them perish. For I will require them from among thy number. You know? Most I say, one of his servants going to perish. He gonna require us from among the number that they have. He says, "Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shall be, thou shall be merry and have abundance." I love it. Read it again. 
be not weary. For when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful. But thou shall be merry and have abundance. That's what we're looking for. Hopefully, the heathen shall envy thee. These other nations are going to envy us. But they shall be able to do nothing against thee. Say it the most high. This is where you want to be in the times that we're looking at right now. Because the great tribulation is at hand. It said, The heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing. You hear that? They shall be able to do nothing against thee, said the Most High. My hand shall cover thee, so that thy children shall not see hell. See? He said, I'm going to cover thee, so that your children shall not see hell. This is beautiful. Verse 30. Be joyful, O thou mother, with thy children, for I will deliver thee, saith the Most High. Remember thy children earth that sleep that are dead in you talking about the earth for I shall bring them out of the size of the earth and show mercy unto them for I am merciful said the most high power almighty See? that's promised to us but where are you at It's about where you at and what are you doing to try and make sure that you you have the relationship with the Most High and the Spirit to be able to fulfill what is written there. As he says he's going to do for his anointing his 12 tribes of Israel that are part of his one third. Look at Psalms 91. Psalms 91 and 1. 